Right guys, welcome back. Just a little quick recap for all you newcomers out there. Thanks for the support. We're pulling my Chevy Fleetline out of the barn. It's an old street car. We're going to turn it into a drag car, do all the work ourselves, and send it to the States and drag race it. So in this episode, we're going to cover a few different areas. The fuel pump's turned up, so we're going to fit the pump and start the wiring process. We're also going to try and stretch these rear quarter panels out and finally get these tyres uh, all buttoned up. Alright guys, welcome back. Hope you all had a great Chrissy and looking forward to the new year. I'm uh, down here at workshop getting my balls chopped because I should be at home with the kids. What we're going to try and do today is we've got the car basically sitting where we want as far as ride height goes on the rear, but we're still running into a little issue getting the wheels on and off. You know, the rear, the rear arches are so low that um, it's not easy to get the wheel on and off. So we've got a portal power here. So we're gonna throw that between the chassis rail and the rear wheel arch. But we're gonna try and cut down this piece of timber and make some sort of buck or form, form it to the shape of the rear quarter and just put some slight pressure on it. Cause we need about half an inch. I reckon we can get these things to stretch just enough to get these wheels on and off. So we're gonna give it a go. If it doesn't work, then we'll go to plan B, which is to try and relief cut the front and the rear of the quarter and pump it out and re-weld it. So uh, let's get on with it and see how we go. How much you got? If that goes in more, you'll okay. get the block on. So we don't need that then? Well, there wouldn't be enough room. Okay, cool. This is too long, really. All right. Right, so what we're doing here is we've uh, we've got the quarter power wedge between the chassis rail and the quarter panel. Chris is going to give it a couple of pumps, stretch this quarter panel out. It worked really, really well, but we still have a lip on the inside of the wheel arch, so we're going to try and roll that lip. We've got a little tool here to, to, to roll that inner lip in. Didn't really work that well, so we ended up getting out the old hammer and dolly and doing it manually. That's mean, dude. Right, so after we beat the hell out of this thing with a hammer and a dolly, we got these wheels to fit really well. Easy to come on and off, about half inch of clearance. So now that that's done, let's get on to some more wiring. While we're waiting on the engine and all the big bits and pieces to come back, um, finally got that rear end finished up, just waiting on a pair of U-bolts because um, we put a lowering block in it. So U-bolts we've got ain't long enough. Um, I have to wait till Wednesday, I think, now until everyone's back at work to pick them up. Fitted the fuel pump in the back of the uh, boot, fitting a relay, doing some wiring, um, just some simple stuff that doesn't cost us any money, um, just to keep the build moving forward. So, uh, yeah, enjoy. So, I just made a little bracket for the pump down here. It's rubber mounted. Finally got the battery tray sitting in, got a couple of battery cables mounted. Obviously, one's going to go straight forward to the starter, and we have put a switch in the back of here. One out of the switch, straight at the starter, earth strap again straight down through the floor of the car over there running up alongside the chassis rail straight to the block everyone does it differently i suppose but we may i kind of like to run one to the chassis and then uh you know back off the chassis straight up to the to the motor that way i kind of figure it covers all bases you got one ground under the chassis and rather than one straight from the battery straight to the engine so we are going to get started to uh wire this thing up painless it's just a power block really one in one out we're going to fit this little bugger just next to the pump another pump straight to that one straight out of that straight to the positive side of the battery so let's get trucking keep it all color coded boys and girls we've all been guilty of that in the past Makes life easy for chasing wires and chasing problems. There's the other side, down down there. There's that old bad boy gun. This boy now is gonna go start at that battery somehow. What I think I'm gonna do is instead of <clears throat> run that all the way up and around there to that battery, I don't really want any more cables. I don't want any more cables on the battery. Turn around and have a look down here. Probably can't see it, but we'll put an isolation switch down there. That relay wants 12 volt supply, so straight from the battery, so we may as well run that straight off there, eh? It's half the, half the distance. It'll annoy me if I have yellow wire going on at the back. Just got some heat shrink here. See if we can feed this all the way through. Turn that wire black. Leave a little bit of yellow on either end so you know which. Not what you're talking about when you're trying to chase these. Easier to find. The terminal on that bandit. One down, 2700 to go. 
Now boys and girls, this is how you wire up the fuel pump if you don't want it to last. The C shot's a shit hole at the minute. Got the old ball warmer 9000 out. This little bad boy can come up here as well. Drill a hole through the front of that panel up there and run it straight through the inside of the car. Hey man! There you go, mofos. Bad for a hack. Sure, should blow up though. One up there, one straight out through there. Switch panel. Power supply. So that's 12 volts. Ignition. That's switched. Positive to the pump. Negative. This is a chopping board. They reckon it's the best thing to use. You get no interference, do you? Oh, no, no. Right, so this is my friend Bob. So hi, Bob. Hello. Bob's come to wire up all our accessories and fuel pumps and switch panel up the top. Just got that cable tied up there for the time being until we get the cage put in. Bob is a master magician when it comes to wiring. Oh, yeah. Knows it all. Doing a little fuse panel down here. This is the feed up to the panel, this red wire. Right. And I've got to think about it before I cut it. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Too late now. And I'm going to join it into this yellow one here. So a little life hack there, chopping board down. Mount everything to the chopping board and that way you don't tend to get any interference with circuits and systems. And It's quite a good idea, the chopping board, isn't it? It's relatively cheap as well, isn't it? £2.50, man. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a mess in here at the minute. But we have pumps in, pumps mounted, pumps wired, batteries in, isolator switches in. Now Bob is running some circuits for, he's running an ignition feed down to that little box so we can power that box up. Then we need to run a wire to the fans, trans brake, the MSD, and one down for the tap, which runs off the MSD, I think. So need a little bracket up here, but here's our trans brake. Uh, painless. Bob working his magic, splicing. What we're going to do is run straight down that A-pillar, straight through that hole, under there, under the dash. So did Father Christmas bring you anything nice? Nah. <sighs> What'd you get? Hand job? First circuit's wired. So, here we are. Ignition, pump, prime. Pretty light. How's your tart, Bob? Rich. I think now you knew her. I've been there. Right, so the U bolt's finally arrived. We can get this rear end all buttoned up now and get the car sitting on the ground. So what they're saying here is we've just fitted that lower Caltrack bar, um, just got the ear bolt on, got the blocks in, it's all tightened up. When the weight's on the car and the car's at ride height, this pin should have literally an air gap between the pin and the spring. And then that's where that's your base measurement. So then what they're saying is when the car's ready to race, you've got the driver in, you've got your ballast in if you're gonna run any, you preload this bar a quarter of a turn so that this pin here is preloading that spring. We've just got it dummied up at the minute. We're going to put the weight in the car, put the axles in, put the diff center in, put the axles in, throw the tires on, sit the car on the ground, and then work out where that little pin's going to sit. Slowly getting this back end complete. Right guys, so finally got the car sitting on the ground, which is, I'm ecstatic. Uh, ride height looks absolutely killer in the rear. Um, what we need to do now is, because we're still waiting on the coilovers and the shocks for the rear, I need to give them a measurement on the front. So I've just literally got it propped up on a jack to where I think ride height should be in the front. We're gonna take a, just a static measurement from the top of the new um, shock towers to the bottom of the control arm where it bolts through. What I'm gonna do is I've got an old set of shocks here, so I'm just gonna cut one of the eyelets off the top, weld a pin on it, um, work out what that measurement is top to bottom, and then I'll weld the shock up just to have a, <clears throat> you know, a static ride height. So um, I'll give you a look at what we're doing. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Take a measurement from here down to that bottom pin on the bottom of the control arm. You can see I've just got a jack underneath the front of the car. We've got this thing sitting at ride height, which is where we kind of want it. 
looks tough as nails. So that's kind of how we're gonna have it sitting. There's a slight rake to the front, I would think. I think the front's just probably, I think the front's probably two inches lower than the rear. Um, I'm kind of hoping that's okay for weight transfer, but the shocks are adjustable anyway. The, the coils are adjustable, so we can always wind those up, but just hope we don't run out of our shock length. So, right, let's get a me tape measure in there, take some measurements, weld these shocks up. Oh, lucky enough, the old tape measure fits straight down there. We'll sit that straight in the mounting bolt. See that down there, sitting on the bottom right there, and that comes up at about 14 and a half inches. So let's make some shocks up. Right, so bell end here, forgot to turn the camera on after I just buzzed these shocks up. So what I did, I found an old set of shocks I had kicking around the uh, the shop, a little bit bent. So all I did was cut the, the, the sheath off it, um, welded the shocks up solid. We measured about 14 and a half inches, point to point on the chassis. Cut the cones off, welded them up, welded a pin on the top so they'll be a you know, they'll, they'll be a rigid shock for now, but at least we'll be, able, we'll be able to push the car around and work out whether that's exactly where we need the front end. Really happy with the rear end. Front end may have to come up a little bit, but it's a place to start. I think if we can go with these measurements, we can get the coilovers made and then we can, the, the coilover will be adjustable anyway, the ride height will be adjustable. So we can we can go a little bit higher if we need to. I'm sure the shock will have uh, enough trouble in it. So uh, here's what we did, I'll show you. Cut the old shocks kicking around the shop. Cut the eyelet straight off the top. Pull these covers off. I just sat some tack welds on these things to, to to make them rigid to say 14 and a half inch and then I just quickly, horribly tack welded a stud on the top of that so they can sit in the hat. So let's stick them in the car. So that's just what we've done there. Just made that solid shock up to give us ride height. So we've done that for, for both of them just there.